Hey everyone, this is Big Benedict, Ninja, Ninja Guide in Black, on Master Ninja Difficulty, Chapter 9, the Military Supply Base. Um, so if I were you, I would bring quite a lot of items to this chapter. You know, um, like I mentioned in the previous video, equip the Dabalahro and grind for money at a, outside Hans Bar. I made up to like 75,000 in essence within a matter of like, it wasn't even 15 minutes doing that method and the reason I say that is because we have some difficult bosses with some uh, they're large bosses they're we're gonna be facing two tanks one right one right after the next and then a chopper and then there is a radio tower sequence which is pretty annoying in fact I don't care for any any one of the boss sections in this chapter and I I kinda consider the radio tower sequence like a boss section too even though it's just taking out some satellite dishes. Uh, so it's not, it's really nice to have the Inferno up to level 3 if you can somehow manage that. Um, so take this guy out right here, three shots. I got this guy right in the head, so that was nice. We're going to grab this Golden Scarab over here. And then we have one more guy on a turret. So stand all the way back here. And then even though you're going to get shot out a little bit, don't worry about it. Just take this guy out and he's gonna drop the key card so if you want to just grab that key card and go into the warehouse that's that's your thing go for it uh, I've just never done that so a lot of a lot of I've, I've noticed that like um, the things that I do in my gameplay these days is is like the same I, I do the same routine every single time and uh, you know it's a little draining sometimes you get weary of things and you, you strive to do different types of things in your gameplay so that's what I try to do in my gameplay uh, for instance like right here in Sigma you would have the I mean here's the exploding arrows right in that um, bin right there and you know in Ninja Guide and Sigma we could actually jump and press uh, what would be the O button on that on that controller but on this controller it's the B button but like we can't even jump and press the B button you know uh, I'm gonna go over that a little bit more. Like, why, why, why can't you do that? Because then you're limited to only being able to throw shurikens, and shurikens sure as hell aren't gonna damage these guys. Not a windmill shuriken either. Uh, so, I mean, what can you, what could you do? I guess you could run all the way back into the tunnel and try to snipe these guys, but I'm sure they would run at you. You know, it just makes for. Uh, I, I would definitely, because um, some people when I started first publishing this guy, they were telling me that what you know, you know what's the difference? It's the same game, and it's really not. It's it, it, in some respects it's similar. I mean, there's a lot of subtle differences I would say. Um, but yeah, the the no, yeah, I mean in Sigma they they let you jump and and fire a projectile. It's just it's just so handy to do that. And they, they made it a lot more stores in Sigma and placed a couple more nice checkpoints. But they still didn't fix everything in Sigma. And in fact, this game has a lot less loading times and everything than Sigma. So it's nice to get the a, a comprehensive experience. So I would I would definitely, you know, if you've never played any of these games, I would probably probably play this one first, you know. It's only ten, but ten ten dollars in the Xbox Live Store. I didn't even know about that until one of my subscribers pointed it out, and I'm like, this can't be the this can't be like the full version. So I actually purchased the the full version on Amazon just to see, just just to make completely sure. Then I sent the full version. I, I sent the physical copy back because uh, it's not. It's, I think it's better to have. The software purchase sometimes rather than a disc that's spinning in there making too much noise and then I you know if I have a disc in there I can't stand my console vertically um, I think there might be an attachment that you can have for that that'll make it vertically erect with the game in it but I don't want to take any chances with my console you know scratching discs up uh, Oh yeah, so remember guillotine throw or wind path off these guys' heads, grab the card. You may have noticed that I grabbed the card at the very end, that's because I like to earn my card. Um, so grab the exploding arrows, and then this chest right here has exploding bats in the next room. 
So I'm just going to equip shurikens and then just take these guys off from a distance. I like this. This is this is this this is an example of good pacing in this game. I mean, they could have filled this room with enemies. If it were Ninja Gaiden three, this room would be stocked full of enemies. You couldn't move. Um, but but here you do, you know you just throw, there's there are a couple enemies, but you know this is a completely empty warehouse and it's a puzzle, and it's great pacing for this level. So up here you do a vertical wall run and then you press the Y button at the the very height of your uh, ascension up that. I guess it's the train, and I'm gonna show you a, a skip. There's there's one platforming skip that I know of that I just, actually just discovered um, a couple playthroughs back playing this game, and it's gonna be based off the same principle that we used to get that golden scarab, just doing a vertical wall run up. Um, but another difference between this game and Sigma is that in Sigma, once you turn the power on, they they don't make you press any. They don't make you go to the two switches. Uh, because there's two switches in this game, um, each switch controls a different. There's two platforms that'll start moving uh, off of each switch. Now up here, I fast forwarded this footage because it was just taking too long. And actually, when I got there's 20 of these flying drones, and then when I got to number 19, I couldn't find the last guy. And I think I could hear the little um, his little helicopter wings spinning, but I couldn't see him anywhere in this whole warehouse. And I think it was like a it was a glitch because he wasn't appearing, but I was I was getting the audio, the audio sound. I could hear him. I was looking all over the place for him. Um, so I, yeah, this is just really repetitive, and I'm using the windmill shuriken here, just jumping off the wall. It takes two hits with the windmill shuriken, so uh, they're all gonna pretty much come up to you. So just just take these guys out really promptly. And here's where I was stuck at 19. I couldn't find the last guy. Um, grab some cores for the first time. Yeah, I'm looking all over the place here. This whole time, I, this is a mute. I muted this section, but this whole time I, I, I could not even see him, but I could hear him. So we took that guy down. Now we just have to turn the power on to this warehouse. And then I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to interact with the two switches. Uh, but if you're going to be doing my first platforming um, skip, you, you won't have to access the first switch that I pull over here you're just going to need to access so if you were going to do my uh, my little trick you just would jump off right now you wouldn't have to go all the way down here and, and hit this switch but I'm just going to show you where the switches are because when I first played this on normal you know when I was forced to play on normal when I first got this game um, not having unlocked any of the higher difficulties I had no idea how to do this because you know coming from Sigma I expected the, the these platforms here to start moving of their own um, so we're not going to have to jump on that platform and the platform works well, it's just, you know, why not skip something if you can? It's not like it's a battle or anything. Um, so, we do need to at least hit this one switch here. So this is the only switch you'll actually need to hit if you're doing my skip. And it's not really a big, huge deal, but it's interesting. So that's the platform we're going to need to jump on. Now, to get on to that we're gonna to need to jump onto one of these cars so all you do is do a vertical wall run and then press Y at the height of the of the run you don't need to press X Y or throw shur shurikens or anything like that like that to give yourself extra height just run up press Y that's it and then we're gonna be jumping on this car to the next and then jumping on that platform the difference in uh, in this version of the of the game is that we have a couple of enemies by the office where we get the card to get out of this warehouse so this is the high potion right here you definitely want to grab that I was just making sure to see if I had you know full inventory right there um, I'm not particularly sure about these two enemies here I think they're on every difficulty but part of me thinks that they might only come on like hard mode up uh, but they sure as hell surprised me when I first came upon these guys, because I was used to having you know no enemies in this room except those drones that we shot. So I'm just doing dash rolls, and you could use smoke bombs too. That guy, uh, that guillotine throw, that killed him. So he's gone. Just in case you're wondering. Um, but I, I really don't use smoke bombs too much, and it's not because I don't like them or anything. It's just that I don't really know how to use them. 
too well. And I see a lot of pros using them. And, you know, uh, one thing they're good for is is going into a door because the in, anything you, anytime you interact with anything in this game, you're pressing the X button, but the X button is also the fast but weaker of the two attacks that you do. So sometimes the game really gets confused about what you're trying to do. Are you trying to hit an opponent? Or are you trying to open a door? So if you throw a smoke bomb, you can pretty much minimize the confusion somehow by dropping that smoke bomb, and then you can just open the door. So don't forget about this one. I think this is the the coolest placement of a golden scarab in the entire game. Myself, that would that would be a pretty hard one to find if you were just kind of naively going through the game. But there's also a couple other hard ones. Now this part right here, you want to. If you're not comfortable doing this fight right away, you definitely just want to sprint over to the save point. Uh, for some reason, I never just go over to the save point. It's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm just too stubborn. And I actually paid the price for it because I had to use a couple of healing items and I could have just, you know, restarted from the save point over here and done better and not wasted any items. But here's another example of not much convenience in this game and the only reason I put the karma screen right up there is because I was kinda curious as to how many enemies there are in this area um, but there's no sa there's no store by the save point the way there is in Ninja Gaiden Sigma so it's it's I, I kinda wonder sometimes that move right there actually is is XX triple Y uh, it, it kind of occurs to me like when they're redoing the game like who made this the decision to put all these extra stores in there because a lot of these stores are placed in Sigma for very good reason and I might sound like a well like a worn out record but there should be a store at the top of the core it would make them it would just make so much the game so much easier uh, there really needs to be one at the very top of the core um, yeah, but I, th I think the stores that they put in Sigma really add a lot more convenience to that game. But to not have one at the top of the core is just inexcusable. There should be checkpoints on bosses too, you know. But this what this is a game that was what made in 2004. So, uh, but you know the remake came out many years later and games were making checkpoints on bosses long before that so that's no there's no excuse for that so basically I like to play these enemies safe you notice they also throw grenades right there what I mean play by when I mean play safe with these enemies I just mean always guillotine throw and do that downward stab and or do an Azuna drop. I do a lot of Azuna drops. It's just a very safe move to do. And sometimes you can get a charge off, sometimes you can't. When you get an on landing charge, you can release the Y button the second like you land. Don't have don't Don't concern yourself with like looking to see that the orb's coming into your person. Uh, you don't even have to waste the time to do that. Um, so you'll definitely, uh, my strategy for the for the tanks is to just go item heavy with magic. I, I just, I have no tolerance for those tanks, they're so fucking stupid. And in Ninja Gaiden Sigma, it's it works fine because you can jump and fire a, a fucking arrow. But here you can't. But anyway, let me talk about the tanks. Uh, the best thing to have... Um, as far as equipment, you want to have your armlet of the moon equipped because even if you have the armlet of the sun equipped, that doesn't increase, uh, at least I don't believe it does, it would be cool if it did increase the power of projectile attacks like the arrows. Um, so have the armlet of the moon equipped because that's going to let you take a little bit more damage um, in that, uh, in a fight that you just, it's hard to not take damage. In fact, you can probably not take damage, but it's uh, damn near impossible, so... Um, you want to have your Inferno up to level 3, and you want to use the cores over the explosive arrows. Um, that's just what I was finding, that the, the cores worked a little bit better. It, 
the amount that you damage the tank has to do with how close you are to him and and like the angle that you hit the thing at. Um, you could also hit the gunner off if if you want to do that, but the thing is, it's a it's a never winning battle because you're just gonna hit the gunner off and he's gonna get replaced. Um, another one's just gonna pop up out of the top of the vehicle. So uh, the inferno takes a lot of damage off. See how good that weapon was right right there? It took a lot of damage off too. Um, so right here, I was disposed to use a couple of healing items and then all my just all my magic attacks, and then I would even. I was counting on this thing to kill me at some point so I could use even more Nimpo. Um, so that one's gone, and then we have another one coming out. This is an unskippable cutscene right here. Um, I mean, I've seen people like hide behind the, the boxes that contain the arrows, and I don't think it's very effective to be honest. Um, in Sigma, you know, you could just jump and fire an arrow and it would work perfectly and this wouldn't be as hard as it is here because as it is, you're just, you're jumping and you're waiting for the thing to fire and then you're moving out of the way and then you're landing and then you're just firing off, you know, your arrows into the thing. Um, but the whole time that gunner is shooting at you and it's, it's just, it doesn't work properly. And then you go to dodge and then you're getting uh, guard locked by the gunner and then you get one of the missiles shot at you and you get considerable damage. It's it's such damage that it's ridiculous. And if you have the armlet of the sun equipped, you're going to, you know, feel the burn even more fiercely because you don't have the armlet of the moon equipped on and, you know, you can take more damage with the ladder. So you saw right there I wasted a $25,000 item, but it doesn't even matter to me because as long as I could just get through a section with the least amount of hassle, and stress, I'd rather do that than, you know, try to conserve items because the next stage is the aqueduct and that's the stage that you can grind for money on from the time you get there from the time you finish the game providing you don't ever defeat the fiend challenge um, because there is a fiend challenge which gives you a talisman of rebirth but it's not worth it because you can grind for money forever on the on the garbage bugs in the next chapter. I mean you can do your, get your unlabored flawlessness um, made from the wooden sword, and it's just it's just a, a perfect opportunity. It's a great spot, and I'll, I'll be talking about it in the next chapter. Here, these guys always give you health orbs, so um, the first one dissipated right there. But the second one, I was able to drag over to myself, and I did pretty well here. The thing is, you need to fire these. See how he just sits there right away? So just fire as many as you can. We're, t we're, d we're talking about the core rods here, not the explosive arrows. Um, his, he's got a couple of patterns. Um, one is more desirable than the, the next, but he'll always go under the bridge. And the first time he goes under the bridge, it's this little cutscene here in which you can move a little bit and, and even aim. Uh, but this is when he's very vulnerable here. So shoot about as many as you possibly can here. And then don't get too greedy, though. Then just dash away. Um, when he's on this side, though, you can kind of hide behind these boxes. It, it does work well. On the, on, the other, on the other one over there, there's a lot of protection. Um, I think it's from this vent. No, I think it's from the other. It's from the other angle when he's on the other side. Um, watch this. So here he's just firing uh, bullets, and I think I even cast Nimpo at one point to immune myself from damage. But don't get into a predicament where you don't have enough items here, because the, the, there's just no backtracking to the store. So, uh, pretty, you know, slow and steady wins this fight, I would say. You know, be very evasive. Don't don't ever shoot him. Like, I mean, the only time I ever shoot this guy is when he goes under the bridge. So, look how, I mean, look how many hits I can get off this guy right here. And he's just so vulnerable right here. And then just dash away at about that point. And then after you dash, then he's mo even more vulnerable right there. He's, like, right now. He's very nice, very good to hit right now. Um, but just don't get preoccupied with hitting because when he's flying around you just need to dodge just evade his, his attacks you know those rockets I mean this this could be a, a, a real source of frustration for somebody who, did, who wasn't properly equipped to deal with this situation and that's really that's the person's fault bottom line but you know if they're going through the campaign for the first time I, I can sympathize with their struggle but 
if you're on Master Ninja mode, there's, there's really no excuse because you've done this, you know, as, provided you've, you know, gone through the difficulties. This is the area right there that gives you really good protection. Now he's going under the bridge. He's very vulnerable. I could just finish him off right now, and this one went really well. Uh, but whatever course he goes, you know, whatever pattern he decides to take, he'll he'll always go under the bridge. You'll always be able to to, to, to nail him right there. Um, the box over by the store, I'm just gonna say to hell with it. I don't want to deal with the ghost fish. I hate the ghost fish. Um, I'll be showing you some ways to deal with them. Um, in the other game, it was just four X's with the Dragon's Claw and Tiger's Fang, and it was, it worked so well. And I was really depressed to see that that weapon wasn't in this game. Because it made dealing with the ghost fish a pleasure to deal. Imagine dealing with the ghost fish, and it's a fucking pleasure. That's what it is in Ninja Gaiden Sigma with the Dragon's Claw and Tiger's Fang. Um, and here, it's just it's it's so bad. The, the fact that they populate the map on the palace with those fucking fish and in the labyrinth, it's... Oh, man, I, I just I don't look forward to it, and I hate it, and it's not fun. Everybody, ha everybody hates it. But, anyway, okay, so this area here, leave one enemy. Don't kill the last enemy, because if you kill all the enemies, then you're going to have a... The whole radio tower swamped with enemies, and as you're trying to kill these, hit these satellite dishes, you know it's 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 fine. It's going to be annoying whichever way you do it, but this way is a lot less annoying because we can just leave one guy on the map here and just take out the the radio dishes. See, after a certain time, your guard does. I mean, you get out of the aiming mode. Um. Yeah, but this this whole all the tower you'll, you'll you'll have many guys shooting at you simultaneously, and it's a lot preferable just to do it this way, where you just leave one guy on the map, and then you just take out the dishes one right after the next. It, it's really it's always a it's always a, a hassle for me because I know there's some asshole that, that could impale me any second on this you know on this platform over here. But trust me, you don't want to do it the other way. It's a nightmare. But anyway, equip your windmill shuriken now. Shurikens, excuse me, and do uh, this. I got a lucky break right here. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, the you should have 25 golden scarabs right now. And I I turned them in off camera, and the reward for giving Miramasa 25 is a fucking smoke bomb. Like the worst thing you could possibly receive in this game. I mean, that's the halfway point. You know, 25 out of 50, and this guy's giving us smoke bombs? Ridiculous. Anyway. Got impaled. I got really jacked up. The whole time I was trying to press the two buttons to activate the Nimpo. I think I got all three of these guys killed right there, and that was really nice. This is a life of the gods right here. We're going to have to come back up to this room. It's a really dumb formality, but we're going to have to grab a card key. Um, but you do have to go through the motions, so just go through them as gracefully as you can. And uh, in this next room here, I'm going to have some more of these guys. I, I, I always try to build up a charge from the corner, you know, at least try to get up a heading. It didn't work there, but I'm going to jump down here by the by the item try to get... This actually worked really well for some reason. Sometimes you just get lucky. And there's the life of the gods. I'm not, I'm not going to interact with the door because I know it's just going to say that it's locked. So we're going to go back up and grab the card key off one of the soldiers who has it. And if you ever have any Nimpo when a stage is nearing its end, you might as well use it unless you're trying to get a Master Ninja ranking because you got a lot of points, a lot of Karma points for having Nimpo. Um, remaining in your key gauge. Sometimes it could be the difference of getting a Master Ninja rank or not, but I never strive to do that. I, I don't care. Um, it's not that I don't care about this game, it's just that certain aspects I don't care. Uh, this is not a karma run. Just, I'm just clearing the game on the hardest difficulty, which is hard enough. I don't need to do, you know, infuse artificial difficulty into the game. Into a game that's a lot of people consider to be the hardest game ever made. In this game in Ninja Gaiden 2, that is. Anyway, 
we just need to open the door, interact with the control console, and then I'm going to actually leave in the the next scene after this because it's I kind of consider a part I yeah, I guess I would consider a part of the level. Um, I edited this stuff out. There's a cutscene that looks like it's out of Final Fantasy 7 or something, which I cut out anyway. And then Gonna have another life of the gods to grab, some explosive arrows in there, and now we can So anytime we need explosive arrows, just come back over to this area because we're gonna be able to come and go through this gate now that we unlocked it from this side. And uh in Sigma in Sigma this 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 little section would never work. It would it would take a long time to spawn these enemies because something was broken about it. Um so in this game it actually properly performs well and we have some sliding imps to deal with, so I don't think you have to deal with these guys. I honestly think you can just jump down into the sewer and save your progress. Then we'll be going on to chapter 10, the aqueduct. It's going to be a really long level, but I'm going to try to just do, a, do it as quickly as I can um, in as concise a manner as I possibly can. Um, just, to, just to get you all through it, and hopefully it'll, it won't turn out to be too long. Less than an hour, I hope. But it's, it's one of the longer of the levels in this game. It's because there's a lot of tasks to do, uh, several bosses, and a lot of items to pick up too, so you don't want to rush through a level and miss items. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter. Thanks.